Hello everybody, my name is Adam Levine from Maroon 5, and you're watching Entertainment Focus. Let's start off nice and easy. How are you today, Adam? I'm good. I just did my new first nude photo shoot. I feel very excited about it. It was very easy, very comfortable. I was going to say, I've just been on um, Twitter, and a lot of your fans have already picked up on your tweet. About yeah, you've already caused I just tweeted about it, actually. Uh, they're, I think they're, their imaginations are running wild. But there were no snakes or, you know, weird... Well, I guess there was a prop, but it was a good one. So how's your stay in London been so far? What was that? Sorry. How's your stay in London been? Great, brief. We've only been here for several, couple days, maybe actually just a day. So just got here. We love it. We've been here loads of times. And it's always fun. So you're over here promoting your new single, Give a Little More, which is out in December. Yes. Tell us a bit about that track. Give a Little More is one of my favorites on the record. Actually, it's kind of a kind of an upbeat, kind of slinky, kind of. Michael Jackson era, kind of off the wall era, or thriller maybe, kind of tune, and it's a great tune, it's a fun kind of dance song, it's nice. And it's quite different to the last single, Misery, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little more down, it's not as, not as peppy. And the video is a bit more um, restrained, because obviously Misery was quite funny. Um, yeah, this one's just kind of them. more like a straight ahead, this, the, give it a little more video is like a, a more performance video performance-based video, and it's kind of like a crazy party orgy situation. <laughs> Very interesting. So how involved do you get in the creative concepts for the video shoots? I'm sometimes really involved, and sometimes not involved at all. I think sometimes both have their merits, you know, sometimes it's nice to stay out of it, and sometimes it's cool to be, to be really involved with the process, but I'm cool either way. So let's talk about the album. Um, Hands All Over came out earlier this year. How's the reception been to it? It's been great, you know? It's kind of like the Wild West in the record industry right now, so it's a confusing time, but it's doing really well, considering, and we're really happy with it, which is the most important thing. Have you got a favorite track on there at all? How you doing over there? Uh, favorite track is, my favorite track on the record, I don't know, I, I tend to kind of not gravitate towards any one song. I like the record, the whole thing's awesome, so I, I fully support the album. Uh, no, no song in particular. And you're looking forward to getting out there and playing it live you're over here next year, aren't you? Yeah, you know, we're really excited. We're doing a couple nights at Brixton in February. So that'll be, that'll be excellent. We're very excited about it. And we love playing in England. We've got great fans here. It's going to be a really good tour. And what is a typical Maroon 5 live show? What could we expect? Huh, wow. Well, I think a live show is, right now, our live show is, is the best it's ever been. And, and we're really working hard up there. And, and we have a new mentality towards playing live kind of a just try harder situation, you know. And we got a great guy, PJ Morton, playing keyboards with us and, and singing background vocals, and he's incredible. So it's a good addition. Very organic show. And do you find the audience is different from country to country, or are they quite similar? I tend to find that, that audiences overseas are very, almost in a weird way, more excited just because of the fact, just because we've come so far to see them. So that's a cool thing, is to feel that energy in the crowd. Oh, you know. That they're thankful that we that, that we've come from in the states. They're yes. spoiled in the states because we're we're from there, so they're not as excited. I was gonna say, do you notice the Brits are normally they're all smashed in the audience? No, yeah, well, it's a wide variety of of, uh, of people and drinking and not drinking. <laughs> it's, yeah, but some of them are absolutely. So I just want to talk a bit more about um, your solo things that you've done. You've done a few songs, you did the song of Kanan, um, you did the song of Kanye West a few years back. Um, do you have plans to do any more solo things or is it all about Maroon 5 for you? Uh, absolutely. I, I think we all love to collaborate with other people. It's part of the, it's part of being a musician, it's part of music. So I embrace all, not all collaborations, but you know the right ones, the ones that make sense and the ones that, that inspire me and you know that's all I can ever do. And there's definitely some things on the horizon so I'm very excited about that as well. And should we expect a solo album any time in the near future? Probably never a proper solo album. I'm, I'm prob I'll probably make music on my own. I'm just not sure to what extent that'll be. I don't think I'm ever going to pursue a solo career. Maybe I may do a one-off thing here and there. Uh, yeah, I've always liked playing, you know, singing old standards and things like that. So I may, I may do something, something like that. So let's talk a bit about the band in the studio. What's your creative process like when you're writing and recording an album? Oh, it's all, it's all over the map. The creative process is basically just a mishmash of every single thing you can imagine. Just playing in a room or 
singing writing on guitar or starting with an MPC beat or something. I mean, it really, a singing in the shower, something comes in my head up late at night. I mean, it doesn't really, there's no rhyme or reason to how, how that works. It's basically just a free for all. And you're pretty the best that way. Are you pretty hands on once you're in there? Yes. Yes, extremely hands on. And do you find that you actually enjoy being in the studio? Because quite a lot of artists always say they find that the most frustrating part because they're not. It, it is. Them. It's de <laughs> being in the studio is absolutely frustrating. But I think the finished product or the reward of being done and, and having achieved something you wanted to achieve is, is a really good thing, and and always winds up being positive. Uh, but it's it's not an easy process. You have to do a lot of soul searching and a lot of hard work, and it's very emotionally draining because you you really exhaust everything. You really it's the complete opposite of touring, whereas with touring you have to be really physically together to keep it together to do these long shows every night. But in the studio it's much more kind of let yourself go for the cause of making the best music you can make. And you know, that's that's a whole different set of <laughs> muscles, you know. And would you say you're your own worst critic? Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm hard on myself, but not hard on myself at all. It's kind of weird. So do you listen to your albums back and think, oh, I wish this was different? I don't wish it was different necessarily, but I definitely go look back and say, oh, this, this could have gone this way or that way. But at the end of the day, you have to be happy with, with what it represented at that point. You know, When I listened to our first album, there's dozen, dozens of things I'd change, but you can't really th think like that because then you, know, you can't take it with you. It's like, it is what it is. It lives as what it is. And that's, that's the end of that. Let's talk just briefly about your voice, because your voice is very distinctive. As soon as you hear you on the radio, you know instantly that it's you. Mm -hmm. um, how do you hit those high notes? <laughs> uh, I was castrated as a young boy. No, I wasn't. Um, I just uh, have a high voice. You know, I, I, when I was a kid, I, I had a really high voice, even higher than it is now, believe it or not. And I'd answer the phone and they'd say, hey, you know, hello ma'am, and things like that. Um, but then I, uh, it stayed high at, once I went through puberty dropped a little bit, but my, my singing voice always stayed high. And you know, some of my favorite singers have really high voices, Sting or also Paul Simon or uh, Paul McCartney or Stevie Wonder, or some of my, most of my heroes, uh, the guys that I emulate and the guys that I love have, have amazingly high voices. So. so what have you got planned for Christmas this year? We're only like five or six weeks away from it. What are you planning to do? Oh, just to relax and be with family and loved ones and play Santa Claus. And so you'll actually get a break then? No eggnog though, I think eggnog is just absolutely putrid. But there are other things I like to drink on Christmas. So what can we expect from Maroon 5 in 2011? Uh, just touring. We're going to come here, we're going to be in the UK, we're going to be in Europe, we're going to go to Southeast Asia, we're going to go to South America, Africa, you know, we're going to be all over the place. We're going to Egypt actually this time, so it should be a pretty amazing year. Russia, we're going to Russia. Yay. And how do you prepare yourself for going on the road for such a long period of time? You know, a lot of yoga. <laughs> uh, exercise is a good thing in general, I think, when you're on the road. Um, what else? Just be relatively healthy, but at the same time, you know, be healthy, but don't be too strict about it, because you, you got to kind of balance things out. You have to go have a drink every once in a while and go out every once in a while, occasionally, on rare occasions, so that you can create that kind of balance because otherwise you go crazy no matter what kind of lifestyle you have.